Greetings everyone and welcome back to TNO The Last is of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. West Russian Soviet Federation lover, but right now we talk about the safe haven. Nikolai Kadashev nervously stared at the door to his new workplace, repeatedly reading the plaque over and over in his head. People's Commissar to Science! People's Commissar to Science! And again. Just weeks ago we had been a lonely man churning out papers on crackpot theories late at night while the rest of the world slept, all while sitting on a doctor he thought he had been made worthless by Russia's instability now. He was ready to begin making waves. Taking a deep breath, he mentally prepared to begin his first day before gripping the door handle, twisting it, and entering the room. Nikolai's anxiety rapidly fed a confusion as he stared into his new workspace. While there were many or the typical trappings of an office space, desks, chairs, typewriters, and so on, the people were quite certainly not what he expected. Men sat at their desks in plain clothes, frantically tapping away at their typewriters. Others were rushing papers to one another, exchanging either veritable novels of conversations or awkward pleasantries as plans were made and theories were shared. Certainly not what you expected, is it? Nikolai turned around to see the commissar himself, who had entered the common area expressively, or expressly to greet his new hire. No, sir, replied Nikolai. Well, get used to it, he chuckled. The PCS, as a safe haven for Russia's brilliant but eccentric visionaries. Is that man clipping his toenails at his desk? Yes, come, come, come. Let, us, let me show you your workplace, and you'll be uh, helping plan energy, as I'm sure Cummins and Donovan told you. Yes, yes, I look forward to it, returned Nikolai as he was ushered past a shirtless, rather hairy man typing away. That's just to make sure you don't mind him. It helps him think. I'm sure. Oh, mind that spell. A psychological revolution. Psychology has always been overlooked by the capitalist nations. It brings no profit in the pockets of the bourgeoisie, does not serve to keep the lower classes enslaved, therefore it is useless. We, on the other hand, and realize its great potential for the betterment of the people. By studying the human mind and its inner workings, we create a society where the needs of the soul are satisfied, are as satisfied as the needs of the body. By granting true happiness to our citizens, we shall prove the superiority of both socialist ideology and social science. The Great Escape. Um, if you want to... Uh, did I read this one before? No, maybe not. Yuri Antipov was a feared man. Once he was feared by the communist intellectuals, who hoped that they would not be forced to answer for their revisionist ideals. Even now, with the overthrow of Suslav and behind the bars of a holding cell, Antipov was still feared. It had been many, many months since he last saw the outside world, the sounds of the crowd, the movements of paper, even the swing of trees were nothing but a memory. He, but he never broke. In spite of it all, he never broke. He waited just for the time to strike. It was a sunny day when Andropov decided that today was the day. <clears throat> he slipped a rusted nail down into his shoe and walking to lunch thrust it into the guard's neck. Blood gushed out in the confusion. Yuri grabbed his gun and began firing wildly as he ran down a long winding hallway. From there it was anarchy. Suddenly, as if on cue, rose, in, rose up in rebellion. A bloodbath ensued, one that Andropov was proud to have helped orchestrate. He laughed as he got to the fence in the courtyard. The watchtower is almost empty after the riot started. Guns, fire, gunfire blazed on, the, on in the background, and not wanting to become the, another cold body, Anzipov ran for it, climbing the fence with an energy he hadn't felt in a long time. On the other side, he didn't look back, and as he ran, he wondered where he would go. The forest, perhaps, and from the collectives to the collectives. Bewildered, the various families of peasants looked up to the mustachioed man in military fatigues, who otherwise lacked any weapons or identifying measures or features of a military figure. Standing on bales of hay before the faded blue farmhouse on the edge of the plot, he reached a crescendo in his already raucous speech. With these latest tools in the sowing of the earth, our output can be greater than ever. If we're to build ultra-visionary socialism, if we're to be permanently rid of the capitalism and the N-word yoke that protects it, we must understand our role in the five-year plan. To feed all the Federation, we must use these tools of plows and tractors to reach our mandated quotas. The alternative is a new tyranny from fascists. And the permanence of misery experienced in so many rural areas, so let's begin our work. Though still dumbfounded and uncertain about their new role, the families of the small community farm cannot refuse their demands. How can we help, comrade? Ooh. Agriculture begin to improve, or research facilities and agriculture begin to improve. Honestly? Ooh, research facilities would be nice. Um, I'm gonna really rush for agriculture. Agriculture really needs it, though. And research facilities is already gonna go up anyways. Ooh. Because they're going to get really cut down once, uh... Hmm. I could really use it more. Because then what's... what's the, we're going to get mass mechanization with modern agriculture anyway, so... You know what? We'll go both. How else can we help? And then experimental armaments? Uh, a social society. A new five-year plan. A visionary currency. At first, both Vladimir Chelomai and Igor Kurchatov thought they had misheard the paramount leader, moving to the back... To back the ruble with energy as opposed to gold, silver, national confidence itself, it seemed like a mad proposition. Both of them knew very well that when Andrei Zidane the proposed something considered visionary, it could not be ignored, and so together with Zidane of himself, they worked later in the night. As they did, however, they could not but grow entranced by the idea. By how many problems it solved, by the radical transformation it would no doubt catalyze at all levels of society. Imagine a currency eternally backed by a local commodity, a commodity universally applicable. Work power liberated towards positive communal 
The use is freedom from the corrupting forces of speculation and manipulation, even apart from the ideals that men could conceptualize. The direct benefits cannot be overstated either. If currency was connected to energy, then his national energy output increased, so too did currency supply, but absent inflationary practices, and if such a scheme was introduced, the work of the state's planning organs could be immensely simplified, as citizens' rations could be determined through the simple allocation of energy rather than a basket of goods. There would be problems, yes, but what true visionary could disagree with what was offered, or shrink from the challenge to what countless will surely say cannot be done. Not they, and so once the proposal was complete, Zidane have ordered that it be introduced in the presidium as soon as possible. He and they could not wait to get started. Sheer genius? A new five-year plan. Let's first step up a new economic policy. We need to decide where to focus our attention. Over the course of the next five years, we will address several key problems of the state and drastically improve the conditions of our economy, but due to the scarce initial resources, we need to choose where to invest the heaviest part of the funds. The other issues will be tackled after the primary focus has been achieved. On one hand, we can devote ourselves to rebuilding our infrastructure network, as without roads and railroads, we can't send resources to our industrial hubs. On the other hand, we can kickstart our industrial sector by building several new heavy industries. From there will come the materials to repair the infrastructure. An insane currency? Ever since the establishment of the reform, Presidium Dimitri Shipola, the Federation's ministry or Minister of Finance, had a most unenviable job attempting to prevent initiatives that would lead in short order to state bankruptcy. Doing so required many late nights of work, and so when Shipola first started the proposal from Zidanov to move the ruble to a model where it was backed solely by state energy output, he thought he was hallucinating, hearing that which was brought on by exhaustion. But as of course Zidanov continued speaking, Shipola realized the man was serious and his confusion was swiftly replaced by abject horror. Zidane spoke passionately and at length about the many positives, but he ignored one critical problem, that to do so would mean immediately destroy any and all he had won, or any of the hard-won confidence in the ruble, as well as rendering foreign exchange impossible besides, and the Federation was not prepared for the position of effective autarky. In desperation, Shivalov looked to the voices he knew to be rational. Those of Nikolai Kardashev and yet Katerina Furtseva, and to his immense relief found them to be equally as horrified as himself, exchanging slight nods of support, they prepared themselves for yet another careful repudiation of revisionary initiative. When the debates and votes came later, they managed to successfully argue for the delay of the excellent idea until such a time as the entirety of the motherland could be liberated from occupying forces. Shipilov knew that the issue would return in the future, but for now at least he had stayed off one more bankruptcy. Utter madness! And we have uh, one decision here we could take, and a cup of coffee to keep us nice and warm, and some more comments too! Not bad. Oh. Ornberg is nascent, huh? Oh, we can do all these at the same time. Okay, I didn't realize that. That was my bad. I thought that was just one at a time. But it doesn't really matter. You know what? We got lucky. Ooh. Military professional will get to increase. That we could do this one but when with Omps just because uh, these won't, these guys won't really hurt us. Well, these guys will hurt us, but like these guys will definitely want to kill off these guys. and We don't have competition for being nice to other people. Ooh, relief for Delvanga's victims. Uh, it's okay. Uh, you know, I like this one better than what it used to be. This seems more interesting. Get some oil. A trip into consciousness. Bourgeois psychologists have merely interpreted the mind. The point hour is to conquer it. Humanity, especially coming up from the womb of capitalism, is wrapped up in ego and pettiness. To the mind, of the, to build the mind of tomorrow, of the new Soviet man, we must reap the abilities to, of new innovations to place thought patterns in completely different states. Early research into the psychedelic effects of lysergetic acid promises shows promise in inducing altered states unlike anything to be experienced in our Earth. In essence, LSD offers cosmic travel years before it's possible. That mind among the stars, while planning on the ground, is the one we can drive into various desired directions and wipe away the old marks of capitalist life. Excerpts from Mind, Comey, and Ultra Visionaries by A.A. Zidanev. Psychic research drives forward. As we'll also talk about op optimized resource exploitation. State growth factor plus 10%. It's not bad. Universal infrastructure expansion. Increase our civilian cost by 0.15. Eh, whatever, it's fine. Increase the GDP. Ah, oh, why not? Its first structure has been heavily damaged and disrupted by German bombs and local bandits in order to bring a modicum of normality into everyday life and ensure a constant stream of supplies for industries we need to both repair what's broken and replace what's obsolete. By creating a dedicated commission tasked with overseeing the state of our infrastructure, we can slowly but steadily improve our situation. From there, everything will prove if given enough time and effort. Alright, so... Fields of physics and chemistry hold triumphs of the fashion capitalist powers made before a grand social state that had a chance to catch up to their progress. However, there's another field of critical disease and yet has, been re has remained untapped. Psychology. Through the brilliance of our scientists, the Psychological Revolution Initiative shall unlock the true powers of the human mind and establish a truly and inherently socialist field of science, ripe for exploration. With the control of the will and the thought within our grasp and the tanks and nuclear devices of the imperial powers shall not us. Also, I do want to let you know I do have the submod that makes 
uh, the chance for all these are really high. So, uh, 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 that's the idea. So, we'll see what happens. Triggers. Subliminal trigger projects. Human cybernetics program. Um, I'm not sure there's a specific order we have to do, or do you just do it? Consciousness initiative. Communication initiative. Rainbow body. Well, let's do the top one. This is cheapest. Through use of psycho psychoactive drugs, hypernotic suggestion, and psychological triggers, experiments shall be performed into the implementation of sophisticated subliminal triggers into the human mind. Gulag prisoners should be selected for this project based off of high deference to authority and good behavior, and be supervised during the process of trigger implementation. Following this phase, or phases, these phases, tests on the variety of possible triggers shall be performed with the goal of utilizing process as subjects for espionage and the implementation of triggers into the minds of captured enemy personnel for uh, as sleeper agents. First steps of the future. As a saxophone from the jazz record and the fog of vodka grew heavier, Zadon never turned to the start of his talk on the latest five-year plan. All this in my manifesto, which all of you, he waved his finger in a line multiple times and gestured towards his own party friends, should have read all of it as science. Proven. We can build a strong Soviet Federation with no markets, with no returning to old BS from the past years, no failed Bukharianism. No, no, no. We're here to win, and this five-year plan will not only create a booming industrial sector to turn out war and civilian material, but will run off of machines. Machines that can take every input to make the most rational decisions and provide for us all. In other words, I want to move this economy as far as my wife's personality as I can. Hardy laughed. With a slapping of backs, a deepening of alcoholic fog, it was a good time to be in a communist party. The fi next five years was so perfectly accounted for. They saw the future over the vodka and jazz. Ooh. Nice. They saw the future over wine and electronica. Infrastructure construction to be 25%. Now, as much as I want to do that, we really probably want to focus more on this stuff than actual infrastructure. So we're going to go with this one. Five-year plan. And then centralized manufacturing. Oh, get a production unit. Increase the GDP. Yes. Industrial equipment begins to improve because we just off-screen got the research facilities to go to the next level to like modern research facilities. So some of our cities, such as Gorky, have great economic value as they're home to well-developed and mostly intact industrial plants. By making these cities up the linchpin of our production center, we'll have the most we'll have them produce what the rest of the nation needs to rebuild and improve. From there, we'll just as a heart brings lifeblood to the rest of the body, so will the Soviet Union receive new energy to restore us to our rightful place as one of the greatest industrial powers of the earth by electric light. Nikolai Kardashev rubbed his eyes and in the bright light of this desk lamp, revealing the large stack of documents, equations, proposals from every bureaucratic part of done and scientific apparatus. There were times when Kardashev wished he could take a break just to curl up under a blanket and sleep for a healthy amount of time, but the workload was too big, especially considering he was working 60-hour works to begin with. Nikolai blinked, and suddenly an image of Zidane's smiling face popped into his mind. He shuddered, shoving it out as fast as it had appeared. He leaned back in his chair, remembering the past couple months of his life. It all seemed good at first. Zidane, the paramount leader, offered him work on a new space program. Nikolai, a space lover since his time or his childhood in Moscow, took him on his offer. Such a simple time, then he heard the rumors, then the rumors became experiences, and the experiences became nightmares as he was assigned to different projects, all somewhat related to socialist utopianism. And he did nothing about but nod along, sign papers and do everything until they low, sometimes in the dead, dead of night, when the only light that Nikolai had the pleasure of seeing was the e swaying bulb in his bedroom or in the cubis cubicles of his departments in whatever new building was shuffled into. Nikolai wondered whether he was just as monstrous as a Zidanev, the man who signed off on every darnable experiment he had the displeasure of witnessing. On other times, Nikolai wondered whether his actions would do anything in the first place. Would his mother and father, those old revolutionaries, have been proud of him? It didn't matter. They were dead and he was alive. Maybe that's the only solace he could take in the situation. Just keep your head down and maybe you'll live. Look at that. How do we improve relations here faster? Huh. Interesting. Oh, look at that. Oh, uh, businesses. Uh, schools. Yeah, I'll do schools. Why not? Cool. The wilderness. It was an inspection tour on a new research facility. One that had requested it. He had requested to see in his continued effort to at least appear nominally supportive of the old visionary agenda that Dmitry Shepilov had his final. That he had his final realization. Sitting in the little cart, being driven around by the facility director himself, an ardent ultra-visionary, and excitedly speaking with no doubt groundbreaking research that would occur with him, Shipilov realized that he was something of an explorer. An explorer of a period that would in time come to be known as one of the abject recklessness, or abject foolishness, or perhaps abject insanity. Having personally approved the funding of the campus, after expending his political capital in preventing a proposal for bullet train bridges from Kola to Kainan Peninsulas, he knew that the resources spent on it could have otherwise allowed for significant increases in agricultural production in central Siberia on a project that can actually benefit the state in concrete fashion both in the near and long term. But after that proposal had not been visionary enough, and this one had, after all, without this complex, you remember Chum 
Chelo Mai, proclaiming with absolute surety, how could they ever produce enough electroconductive fluid to permit exoplanetary mining operations? As the director continued speaking at him, Shiplaw turned to look at the buildings, ignoring the words, would he in time revisit this place as a monument of the work once thought great to those who thought ultra-visionary projects as, as an example of the mind of the Federation? Shiplaw did not know. He was the only voice in the dark wilderness, but sometimes the wilderness could reclaim that for which it had been displaced. He had only hoped that he could be there when it happened. Look upon my works, ye mighty. Such as manufacturers would be really good to do next. And, of course, we're still doing... Ooh, in relations. Just got to keep an eye on all that stuff. But we're out four and doing quite well with that. Um, human and cyber next programs. We'll talk about that one after we get this one. And, of course, we do about optimized resource extraction or exploitation. Russia is rich with resources, but most of them were still untapped. To make things worse, the war on the Luftwaffe bombings have either destroyed or isolated several important extraction plants. This is putting a strain on our industrial development programs. In order to improve our economy, we need to facilitate or need to improve and re rebuild and improve our existing facilities and establish new production plants wherever we can find new ore veins and other important natural resources. Oh, yes, please. But... Work shall begin on a revolutionary brain-computer interface to be utilized with live human subjects and tested with mechanical devices. Through conditioning and providing mental feedback to the subject, more practical methods of interface between technology and the human mind shall be developed, and more complex mechanical devices shall gradually be implemented into the program and tested with trained subjects. Future applications of this project into the fields of computing shall be studied, and scans of the brain while in operation shall be procured. Nice. Can't wait. Cannot wait. Oh. Cool and Metri, very nice. 32 divisions, not bad. I think 32 divisions is good enough for now. That's 32 infantry divisions, and we won't have the industry really support any more than that. So, we'll have them train for now. These guys will get, definitely get better overall, but the little 11 endure. Oh, that's cool. Nice. We're actually in luck. They'll need it. Urban resettlement programs. During the course of the last 20 years, millions of people all across the Soviet Union fled from the cities to avoid bombings, poverty, and famine. While the countryside fared no better than the urban areas, at least there was food now that the emergency is over. We found ourselves with empty factories in the cities and thousands of unemployed in the more rural regions of the country. In order to both reduce unemployment in the countryside and supply our industrial sector with all the workers it needs in preparation for its future expansion, We'll begin a plan of urban resettlement. Young unemployed men and women in our rural regions will be incentivized, or forced if they refuse, to transfer to the nearest cities, where we'll build new houses for everyone, thus also kickstarting the construction industry. Not a bad idea. Urban resettlement. Love it. Ah, yes. Um, let's make sure we're not producing garbage, or at least outdated stuff. Um, land auction, we're still going to work on that in a little bit. Planes, yeah, we probably want to get some better planes. APCs, better APCs. We need more factories. We're doing okay in tanks, though. It's really nice. All right, anything else up here? Improve relations? Why not? Ah, local businesses? Why not? Infrastructure. Cool, Ornberg. Nice. We're building the future. Oh, just building the future. When our leader said he had a vision, he didn't lie. Through his cunning plans and great foresight, we have drastically improved both the economy of the Soviet Union and the lives of the people. Production keeps increasing, and now we have functioning infrastructure and well-managed cities filled with industrious citizens. There's still much to do before we can truly restore the Soviet Union, but this is a step in the right direction. We are no longer plagued by our past and mistakes. Instead, we are building a tall bridge towards the future. Forwards, comrades. Poverty begin to rapidly improve. Oh, I love that. I think we better... Uh, we're going to like, so we'll just go with Nice. Good. They're friendly, which we love. Ah. Anything else? No? Darn it. I was hoping that we could improve society, because right now, society, it's all green. Oh, my gosh. It's minus 0.21 poverty rate change, which is great. I love it. And look at that. Oh, it's going up high. Oh, it's 11 every month. That's really good. This is over almost 12. Holy crap. Widespread corruption, 8. We're going to get that done very soon, which would be great for just, like, the economy and just society. Even agriculture is not looking bad. It's still at 9. Research, like I said, we're in modern research facilities as well. And academic base is going by 6 every month. So, I'm loving Zidanev. Zidanev is a lot of fun. Building the future. And we can do... A social society. Some might say that we've achieved our dream and that with the reforms we've implemented, we have created a society whose greatest aspiration is a pursuit of knowledge. Some misguided fools may even claim that we have created an advanced social society. They're sorely wrong. It's nothing but the start. All the work we've done for until now is nothing but laying the groundwork for the true scientific revolution. It'll be the next years that we will make our dream come true. A socialist future, a truly social society, a truly socialist world. Forward, my friends, forward. Yeah, I could use another military base here. Good. 
I just want to improve society more, man. And now that's basically 1968, we're going to have to start probably converting our divisions over just because these guys will probably want to start killing us. I mean, it's 69 where we really kill each other. So, what, what are they up to first? We could have sort of never told you. If you want to about that, please go ahead. So, as soon as they start an invasion, I'm going to convert things immediately. We're not going to have enough equipment, I'll be honest, because I'm not making. We're not just making enough. Especially for artillery. Ah, artillery's 4,000. That's pretty good. Gun wise, we, that might not be very good, though. But now, we're going to head on over to a vision for the army. A Red Army is still a relatively new institution. Formed in the chaos following socialist rule coming to the old Komi Republic, the current military force is only intended to be just good enough to carry out offensive operations without collapsing in on itself due to a lack of organization. Unfortunately, good enough simply won't cut it. The enemies of socialism grow in strength all around us, and already pose a greater threat than any foe we faced during the unification wars. To better prepare ourselves for the inevitable wars of the future, the Red Army must be restored to its former glory. A professional fighting force that resembles the very same army that once stood on the front lines against fascist tyranny many years ago. Oh, yes, there we go. Uh, school construction? Uh, go with infrastructure for now. Add a sphere? Oh. So this is all Euro League. Okay, that's cool. Get infrastructure. And that's all Orenburg, so that's good. That's very good. Maybe we'll add them to our lines before these guys attack, so. Nice. Receptiveness is 20%, which is pretty good. Growth is not bad. Influence is pretty high, too. I like this. Very nice. Subliminal triggers partial success. Uh, okay. Abstract 10 subjects uh, were transferred to facility XX from Gulag X on a date indicated above. Subjects were placed in individual experimentation rooms. Of note R, subject 3, administered XXXX gas through ventilation in the evening. Observed the following day. Daily triggers included loud tapping across the walls, noise replicated from war era stuka dive bombers for 15 minutes every 6 hour period. A list of phrases were read aloud. A recital of the Communist Manifesto wall with alternating narrator. The result, subject did not exhibit any abnormalities in mental or physical functioning for three days. On the fourth day, subject collapsed during lunch and their cell and experienced a heart attack. This subtask was repl replicated on two more subjects with to no results. Original subject expired. Subject 8. Experiment began with the subject being placed in a lab chair. Observed by four scientists, compound X, compound X was dropped in primitive doses into the subject's eyes, who was in turn strapped into the chair. Their eyelids were forced open through the experiment. Subject was shown X, a collection of clips from movies and war footage that exemplified extreme violence and gore. The experiment lasted eight hours. Subject was returned to their cell after. The next phase commenced during midnight, when two guards armed with steel batons attacked the subject. Result, the subject was unable to defend themselves. But what is the shock? Post recovery questioning revealed that the subject was incapable of performing violent acts, nor could they even fully grasp the concept of violence. Not bad amount of growth. <clears throat> Conclusion. I advise that we switch sub objectives. Neither subject came close to the long-term trigger response necessary for the sleeper agent theory. However, both subjects proved that there was much more to the human the brain that we are unaware of. We should replicate subject 8's experiment on a wider test group. As for subject 3, I've already ordered investigations into the genetic history and awaiting your permission for more tests. Uh, Post-test. All surviving subjects were released from the Gulag system. Those deemed unsuitable for society are currently being transferred to Hospital X. Better than nothing. Okay. Release ability. More encryption. That's really nice. A vision for the army. Of course. Of course. And then we'll talk about a vision for the world. Um, actually, let's do this one first. Ooh, anything here? Do, 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 do. Oh, okay. And optimized language initiative. Uh, did we talk about that one? Oh, oh, this is a social society. Yeah, this is a optimized language. Psychological revolution. We'll do hybrid human cybernetics first. And then optimized language initiative. Initiative to construct an optimized form of the Russian language shall begin. Implementing linguistic concepts from established syn syn synthetic languages. Through the manipulation of language in order to make certain concepts much more difficult to express, it's hypothesized that society shall embrace the comparatively simpler concepts with much more enthusiasm, and shun concepts that have deemed unhealthy to a functional social state. Then, experimental armaments. We may have had great plans for the Soviet Union, but our army struggles to match the dimensions of our dreams. With a small manpower pool and even a smaller industrial base, we cannot help to overwhelm our enemies with sheer numbers instead of wasting time in something we can never achieve. We need to focus on the greatest weapon at our disposal, science. With our renewed focus on technological advancements, we can create a dedicated research team whose sole focus shall be the development of new weapons by meeting our enemy on the battlefield armed with overwhelmingly superior equipment. Their numbers will melt like snow in summer. Social science shall pave the way to supremacy and a social society. The weekly meeting of the people's commissary of science occurred once again. They themselves have been surprised when Zadanov himself came to the meeting and told them of their next mission. It will be to prepare a new society, one that is social and combines the ideas of the visionary ideas or ideals that many of the scientists in the commissary hold. A small outline has been produced and made by the scientists with its large focus on making the country more advanced using modern ideas rather instead of 
of the old, more focused ideals that had been made in the eve of the Russian Revolution. The goal of their new mission was to figure out a way for the society to become one that would be model, a model for all socialist countries. Ideas ranged from the idea of a united culture that would surround all socialist countries and inspire many of them. However, first, they needed to select what they would research first. Would they reach for the idea for that they would need to research deep into the ideas of the technology that would connect them such as satellites and high-tech radio? Or would they delve deeper into fields such as so sociology, where they would learn how to truly influence people and make sure that society they envisioned would be the best one for the people that will live in the society? Whatever the focus they chose to look at first, <clears throat> it would be one that would be important to the future of the socialist cause for visionaries everywhere. For socialism, peace through superior firepower, the People's Commissariat assigned to the regular meetings that they had nearly every week. It was more of the same, however, than something that was something new was finally announced to them. They would now begin to focus on military advancements. These would range from simple things such as advanced, advanced rifles to more advanced weapons such as laser weapons that could destroy incoming missiles from miles away. Coley had been to many of these meetings. He knew the procedure quite well. However, today was an unusual day instead of the regular procedure of a meeting and then the sharing of ideas. They focused on the ideas of militarization. He saw himself many... He himself saw many of these ideas as science fiction, ideas that only stood in books. However, as he learned more and more from the men who had spoken at the meeting, he saw those much closer to reality than fiction. Ideas that had been brought up to the men, such as ideas of the high-altitude bombers that could strike enemies from altitudes only dreamt of. These ideas have floated around the men as they worked harder and harder at one up one another. More ideas have been considered, such as powerful tanks that could withstand nearly all the firepower in the German arsenal. While many of these ideas could be seen as nearly fiction to the many people of West Russia, it was nothing more than a possibility for the dreamers of the People's Commissariat of Science for the future. And Project Tarakan. A new planned assault rifle for use in rapidly mobile forces shall be tested and deployed in practical trials. The planned Tarakan rifles a unique development and on imported Western bullpup assault rifles with an exceptionally short barrel and lightweight construction. These characteristics will make it uniquely useful as a standard weapon for mechanized and airborne forces as well as for special operative units. Very cool. So now we have all three churning on at the exact same time, which is great, 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 great. Oh. Look at what this is. Uh, we're going to max out infrastructure so we don't have to build it later on. So that'll be good. Uh, which just helps GDP, I think, slightly as well. So uh, France goes into isolation. Very good job, France. Good job, good job. And if you want to about better industrial equipment, please go ahead. Off screen, we did get better ad admin efficiency. So that was really good as well. And we have factory complexes. Nice. And we're doing a vision for the world. The dark days of the world already have finally come to an end. And our young nation has climbed out from the abyss to establish itself as a true regional power in the past. We've had little need for a foreign ministry. As diplomacy in the warlord period usually involved the sword rather than the pen. The world beckons. We now find ourselves in the need of capable diplomats mo now more than ever. The foreign ministry must ex be expanded to meet the requirements of properly conducting international diplomacy and they should begin making contact with the nations of the globe as soon as they are able to. Let all the foreign powers know that the socialism returned to Russia in earnest. And if you're about the Euro League, except integration, please go right ahead. Nice. So with that in mind, now we get the units and soldiers, which is great. We're going to start converting their divisions actually to... What well, we should have been converting them to originally. Um, I do have some of this. What is this division like? Eh, it's okay. Honestly. Uh, let's see. I want to see the cost first because we're going to make them all infantry for now. You know what? We're making a tank division here too, but. Um, actually, what type of templates? Eh, it's okay. It's okay. 16 come with. I mean, it's not bad. Actually, that's not too bad, actually. That's an infantry template 4. They do have anti tank, which would not be a bad thing to actually have. Because our guys are basically the same thing without the anti-tank. And that would cost a little bit more to edit. F5. Okay, now that's not bad. Infantry template 5 with that extra anti-tank would be very, very useful against the Germans. So infantry template 5. Actually, you know what? Screw it. You all become infantry template 5. It's not bad. Because anti-tank, yeah. That's all good stuff. Really good stuff. And not bad. Solid. Very solid. Um, you know what? Come here, too. We're going to be exploding the debt, but whatever. It's fine. And Sergei Sokolov. Yes. Oh, oh, wrong one. Five, five, five. I don't even want to look at the other ones yet. Five. Um, actually, how is this one looking? It's six, because we want to appear that it's five, which is fine. It doesn't matter. Don't care about that one. Don't care about that one. Don't care about that one. Cool. Give it that one too. Really keep it nice and small. We might use one of these as well, but here comes a ballooning debt. Oh boy. Oh good god. Surplus is gonna drop like crazy. Um, probably so. But with this many divisions, 43 divisions. Holy crap. Uh, we'll see in just a little bit how bad it's gonna get. But a vision for the world. Now I did ask you guys yesterday whether we should or not should not do macro scale strategy versus micro scale uh, tactics. And overall, the time of recording, there's more support for macro scale strategy, not the one with more military professionalism. But 
The Second Indo-Patriotic War, also known as the West Russian War, was the last and most recent conflict involving the United Forces of Russia. The Red Army's mighty offensive nearly broke the back of the fascists, driving them from the AA line and putting their entire front on the verge of collapse. Yet despite being on the very cusp of victory, military setbacks and traitors alike stole the victory right out of their hands. We shall study the various tactics and strategies used by both sides. The Second Patriotic War was in many ways a herald of wars to come, with all parties involved utilizing never-before-seen methods of warfare. The overwhelming offensive launched by the Red Army in particular is worth studying, as well as the fascist miraculous recovery. Nice. So that one's left. Even though we started with that one first and only, so. Yeah, go and core that stuff. That'd be super important to do. Nothing down there? Nice. So then we'll go with the Global Armed Forces Program. The world has not become any more peaceful since the period of stagnation that followed the Second Patriotic War, and already the great powers of the world threw their weight already around in various proxy wars around the globe. These small, oh crap, smaller scale conflicts have already seen the use of all kinds of tactical innovation. In that case, perhaps it would be prudent to study the strategies used in these wars and find ways to adapt them for our own purposes. In particular, the South African War has caught the interest of the Red Army's command staff. This bloody proxy conflict saw the new bold new concepts such as air mobile infantry and asymmetric warfare used by both sides and served as a glimpse of what the true modern war could be. The lessons that were demonstrated in the hills and jungles of Africa could very well apply to the forests and tundra of Russia as well. My bad about converting these guys a little bit too late. Uh, but let's get them to at least be regulars first. We should be. There we go. Get them all to be regulars first. And once there's about like seven days left, and then we'll train them. Ooh, if you want to be better in industrial equipment, please go ahead as well. Excellent, my friends. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Innovative industry. Nice. Another seven days. I won't get, stop training them. Uh, just so they can get some more experience. Because they can't do anything anyway, so. And there we shall go. Nice. So you should, oh, some of you are so really green. Get some organization, because my god, you're going to need it. And the debt is now not bad. 0.55. Oh, are we at war? Oh, 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 we're actually at war already with them. Okay. Invasion of the Southern Europe. Oh, we're at war already. If you're wondering with us, please go right ahead. I mean, we're at war already, whatever. My bad. This is definitely not what I wanted. But hey, we can do all this stuff. Nice. Nice. Good stuff. Just gonna hang out for now. Um, I mean, if you if you can, I mean, I, I would advise winning if you can, because I want to make sure that our guys have enough organization first. They obviously don't have a ton of experience. It's fine, but still, but still, nice, good job, guys. Oh, and they're attacking us too. See, they're attacking us, and I want to help defend. Maybe we can defend before y'all lose too badly. There you go. They go in there too. Just get more organization. That's the most important thing right now. First, I wasn't planning on having this war start this early, but whatever. Um, they already took the tile. Yeah, no. Good. Let them attack us here, because is this mountains? It is mountains. That's why we're doing so well here. Let them attack us repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. We lost 7,000 versus 31,000. My macro scale strategy is very nice. I hope you guys are having a pretty good day. I'm doing well myself. Let's talk about visionary warfare doctrines. Our efforts are paying off. The Red Army is beginning to closely resemble the very same force across the AA line that fascist occupied territories nearly a decade ago, <clears throat> finally bearing the markings or makings of a professional military. However, the truth is that we've not gone far enough. Our current Red Army would have been considered top-notch in decades past, but it's hardly up to modern standards. The General Secretary has approved a massive increase in funding for the Red Army, intended to aid with more intensive modernization efforts. No longer shall we lag beyond the rest of the world through the application of cutting-edge modern technologies and intuitive new tactics. The Red Army shall transform into a force ready to face the modern battlefield. Hey, they want to keep attacking. I am I am more than okay with that. Oh, and can we actually win here? You should be able to win here pretty easily, actually. Nice. Actually, maybe we shouldn't attack there. But we have to. We will have to literally micro all of this. I'm not going to attack the mountains up there. We're going to focus on the north first. That's much more important. Oh yeah, keep attacking. Yeah, you know what? I'm okay with this. You guys keep attacking, and if we can hold off your attacks, get us some more uh, XP. Fine with me. Good super good production efficiency four. Great. Some comments included. If we went for the repeal earlier in the last episode, we still have a surplus. How do we have a surplus? Uh, like over here, if we went for the repeal, we would have had a higher chance for successful projects. But with a sub mod, I think it should be okay. And someone says, experiments can give us uh, bonuses or buffs, so that's why I wanted to do this as quickly as possible. So it all costs PP, as we can see, but sometimes you got to use your PP to get some stuff. Nice. More soft attack. Losses. 66, 68,000. How much map are they? They have a lot of divisions. I mean, we have a lot of divisions, too, now. The black budget. They have a lot. Oh, my God. How do they have that much map? Are 800,000? I mean, I guess it is Omsk. I mean, what do you expect? So the goal is to just delete all the uh, equipment, basically, then. Empty tank, artillery's not looking pretty good. 
If they keep attacking, they'll run out of equipment soon enough anyway, so I'm not super worried about that. And we're holding very nicely. These divisions we have are pretty good. Escalate land for them. Yes. Support heavy machinery. Stall poverty relief. Oh, more growth. Give them more inflation, but that's okay. Hiring foreign instructors. Oh, yes, please. A lot more debt. Minus 0.33. Holy crap. A particular German general. Comrades, I've assembled you here all today to discuss our tactics that the West Russian Revolutionary Front had used against the Nazis during the Great Patriotic War. Said uh, Veronikov, Veronikov to the men that had been assembled in front of him. While many of them had fought in the war, some of them hadn't and had been more focused on operating the East during the conflict. As many of us know too well, we've been too brash in our attacks, coming here to Moscow with an incredible speed while these tactics are seen as acceptable in some places. It truly led to our downfall. He stopped for a split second and watched the room before motioning to his assistant to change the projector screen, and then showed a map of the Russian advance. Varnikov then pulled out a presentation pointer and tapped it against the border regions of Moscow. While our first attacks had been good, they soon descended into a slow-moving alt slaughter. We caught the Germans off guard. They thought that we had been dead for good. However, as they learned over the next few months, it couldn't have been more wrong. They will certainly be expecting us to arrive to the doorstep in coming years, so we must learn from our mistakes. Varanikov motioned to the assistant once again, who had seemed fallen asleep. She, he poked the assistant with a pointer, who then shot up awake and changed the slide. It then showed a picture of Hans Speidel, the man who had stopped the war. The man right here, he is the architect of our downfall. If we win against him, we must prepare. If we want to. If not, we can expect a loss that Russia has never seen before. Ooh, nice. So now it goes up to 7.05 every day. Or every month, I guess. We can do war taxes, but we don't really need it. Point two three billion for supplies is basically nothing. But we get less debt, which is really nice. Uh, we're already maxed out here, too. And they just love attacking, which I'm okay with. I'm okay with Kazan Military Academy. Uh, ooh, more organization. We can use that immediately. I want to wait for this one, because once the next level we get for military professionalism, then doing this one will be worth it, so we can actually make sure we get the full effects of it. I like your super military supervision. Like they're connected. Uh, uh, Kazan Military Academy. Kazan is home to one of the nine Surovov schools that were created during the Bukharan era. These specialized boarding schools were intended to provide young men with a secondary military-focused education. And as such, many of the Red Army's officers started their careers in these schools. Ever since the unfortunate collapse of the Soviet Union, however, the school in Kazan has gone nearly un mostly unused. Who should run over this building and reopen an institution in its place, the Kazan Military Academy? Rather than being intended for secondary education, this new academy will be created with its express purpose of training new officers for the Red Army. Once Kazan's academy has been reestablished, we can begin creating the next generation of the Red Army Officers Corps. If you don't know about this, please go right ahead. Poverty monthly change. Nice. Something to be celebrated. Basic literacy with primary schooling. Awesome. The Congo Civil War. Uh, do we care about the Congo? No, not really. Expand the power grid. Why not? Give more weekly stability. Yeah, they're lightly touching us now. Yeah, they're not looking nearly as strong as they used to. They've lost 100. Oh my gosh. We've lost 10,000. Nice. Next generation war for them. They may have been early in the morning, with many of the men drinking coffee. Some of them preferred to be drinking a more heavy substance, one that would wake them up and prepare them for the day of discussing the next generations of warfare that they would develop in the armies that would take place in. Many subjects have been brought up so far, such as the development of bombers that could strike from miles in the air and hit targets uh, countries away. However, one of the more polarizing topics that have been brought up with is the development of lasers. Lasers have been a personal interest of many of the scientists who had been assigned to work on the projects, but they soon remember that they had to focus on only the next generation and not 50 years from now. Many of them shared the same ideas. The warfare in the coming decade would mostly be shaped as similar to the combat that many of them had seen so far. One. That was fought in one with fast-moving vehicles and a very mobile infantry. Some scientists had more outlying ideas and that soon garnished, garnered more interest. One idea was proposed that the next generation of war would be completely fought with air combat. Land would be seen as irrelevant, unless the helicopters or planes had been dropping off soldiers for a fast-track mission such as a raid. While the idea had certainly been seen as laughable at first, it soon garnered more attention as some of the men had begun to agree with it after thinking over the idea a few times. What well, certainly controversial was an opinion that could possibly work in due time as the men followed out of the building to continue, to continue the research. They wondered if it was truly possible at the end of the day. If our work is organizations, yes please. Armored Warfare shall reign supreme. One day, Land Warfare will become a sideshow. It's not bad, too, because we could definitely use that. And the necessity of infantry shall never fade away. Yeah, that's okay and all. I'm going to go armor. Mm, I think armor. The armor? Ooh, but planes. Uh, let's take a look. Because we already have the 1960s tanks. These guys will take 227 days of research. But these, yeah, getting better planes and making them faster is probably even better. So, we'll go with that one. And then, doctrinal synergies. 
of synergenetics. Synergetics. The needs of a modern battlefield change at the blink of an eye, and if one is not careful, they can find themselves falling behind the curve sooner than they think, despite our best efforts. However, the doctrines in use by the Red Army are hopelessly still trapped in the past. If action is not taken soon, our enemies will surely run circles around us. The time has come to analyze our strategies and refine them in to be more suitable contemporary conflict. Not only must we bring the Red Army up to the modern standards, but we must also keep a sharp eye towards the doctrines of the future, after all. We're going to maintain a clear advantage over our potential foes as paramount to achieving victory. Look at that. We get the wealth of Warmburg, more construction speed, output, and factory goods production factor. And 150 political power. Wow. Nice. We're going to use that doctrine immediately. Go and convert yourself to infantry. I'm not even going to look at any of this stuff. We have what we have, and I already don't want to mess with anything else. Actually, that... Eh, maybe we should have used those elite divisions, but whatever. Um, nothing there that we really care about. Nope. Nope. All right, cool. Oh, there you go. Get another general, too. Oh, they actually replaced all the losses already, huh? Banov. Banov. Proposed neutral ceasefire. Nope. Why would we do that? Yeah, they, they're still attacking, so... I'm not gonna really stop. Ceasefire proposed. If you want to about that, please go ahead. No. Actually, if anything... Um, you know what? Let's take you back out. And if they still don't attack, attack as much, then... Actually, where are you guys at? You guys come over here. Just literally just come over here and train. It's on me. Yeah. We're fine. We are okay. Now we're going to have still a surplus. All right. Growth is looking pretty good, too. If they want to keep attacking, I am okay with that, man. I am okay with that. Get more base bleed. Yeah, we'll get that, too. Why not? Get some more uh, soft attack and breakthrough. It's only 2%, but I'll so, we'll so gladly take it. I will so lovely, lovely, lovely take it. Still been in prison here. Oh, wow, we're maxed out. Holy crap. I mean, we, I really focus on getting all that stuff down here, but that's awesome. Look at that. That's so good. Federation's finest. Let's go on over to the Embassy of the Global Proletariat. While one of the many buildings of the world may seek to build a series of embassies to represent our governments of a foreign nation, our Federation is not merely a nation among equals. Our Federation is in its own league, the seat of a social superculture that shall one day grow to encompass most of the world. Thusly, rather than the standard diplomatic practices of the most nations of paramount leaders ordered the foreign ministry to construct a grand edifice in Kubashev, the Embassy of the Global Proletariat. This edifice to contain representatives of the working class across the world with delegates that embody the spirit of the working classes of each and every nation. While our relations may be limited now, there is no reason to limit ourselves. <clears throat> uh, uh, nations that refuse to send delegates shall be properly represented as well by Soviet citizens that best exemplify the socialization of the working class within their host nation civilization. Regardless of the willingness to adhere to our policies, the world shall be represented in the true spirit of socialist internationalism. Visionary identities. There are th oh my gosh, that's so much dead. For no, literally no reason. But Ivan nervously scratched the back of his neck, glancing across his wife and newborn child occasionally as he sunk deeper into his chair. He snapped his attention back to the pair of radio hosts who had invited him to the sta studio of Radio Pravda. As one began to speak, know the drill? Ivan nodded in affirmation. Those glanced at Ivan's wife, Agnia, looking for the same approval. She responded with a weak nod, still rubbing her sleep from her eyes. <clears throat> this wasn't her. her. The name wasn't her idea. Being dragged onto Radio Pravda long before Bracas hours of recorded interview wasn't her idea, but her family had been promised big rewards if they learned, leaned into Forseva's new program. Welcome to the show, comrades. Today we've invited the Markov family into the studio to introduce the wonders of Comrade Forseva's brilliant new names program. Why don't you introduce the little one, Ivan? And began the other host as a microphone was pressed into Ivan's face. His name is Mills, after the four revolutionary heroes, Marx, Engel, Lenin, and Zidanov. Huh. Wonderful, a powerful name. You see, dear listeners, in the pursuit of socialist ideals, Fortsevas realized that new identities could be one of the easiest steps you yourself can take into furthering the cause. Care to explain, or help me explain, Ivan? Well, uh, Ivan cleared his throat. As we strive to build a global socialist culture, we must take on the aspects of a culture. As anyone can tell you, names themselves are far smells and expression of belonging to one, so we and you too can begin building that culture by setting forth into the world a generation of visionaries with names to match. Well said, Ivan. Additionally, any of these newborn visionaries who seek higher education will have a guaranteed so long as their parents submit their names to so save us new registry. Thank you for coming on the show, Markov. As the recording ended, the host went each for a glass of water. Wiping his lips, the older host spoke once again. Great work, Ivan. As promised, your benefits will be granted. I need those scripts back now, though. Reorganize the war ministry. With the expansion of our territory comes an unavoidable increase in the number of officers needed by the Red Army's general staff. This would not be too much of an issue if not for the fact that the war ministry is currently in a chaotic mess. Virtually unchanged from the days of the Komi Republic, the sorry state of affairs cannot be allowed to persist. The military or war ministry 
was, must be reorganized from the ground up to better serve the needs of the considerably larger areas of operations. With some extensive streamlining, it's believed that the chain of command will flow more smoothly. Generals will be able to receive any and all necessary information about combat readiness or combat field conditions at a moment's notice, enhancing their abilities to command our troops. And if they're done attacking us, I'm actually going to send half you guys away. There you go, do that. Ah, Tankerinos. England and Scotland of War, very nice. On Yakobolsky. Yeah, I want them to be baited into attacking us even more, 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 so. That is a legal. Actually, how much? We're looking, we're lacking tanks, which sucks. We have enough APCs, which is great. We got enough guns. We need casts. Political reliability is gone. That sucks. Um, tanks are fine. APCs are on one. That's fine. Artillery is fine as well. Uh, I don't really lure this by too much, but we can do it like that, maybe. Just because we, we need to start making some planes. We really desperately need some planes. And if you want... It's in over there, too. It's fine. The Embassy. <clears throat> With a proclamation of the new U.S. star came a steady trackle of immigrants, radicals from Europe and America, who never having seen a large socialist project in their lives, found the prospect of a resurrected Soviet state fascinating. Some had taken unbelievably daring journeys over German lines to get there. Emma's store was significantly less impressive. She flew from Indu from New York after some time as a student radical. She shared an apartment in the capital with a few other foreigners. When the Embassy of the Global Proletariat was announced, she was among the first to sign up. The building was an old or odd meeting hall, but if you'd like to be read about better military professionals on Pittsburgh ahead. Uh, chosen for its scale with different nations' delegations arranged in a great circle, and Emma decided to put tour them before joining her comrades in the American section. First came the Soviet section, robustly populated with a number of local officials. Then came the British section, an eclectic group of elderly resistance fighters and trade unionists. The German delegation piqued their interest. Comrades, you must have suffered greatly under fascism. How did you escape? Uh, the man she was addressed in looked confused before replying in what was unmistakably a local accent. Ah, I see the confusion. In the absence of German representatives, we're portraying the German proletariat in their stead. Strolling the aisles from Hungary to Iran to most bizarringly of all, the oppressed African people's delegations, Emma found that the case was the same. Without the global proletariat actually present, the Soviets had actually taken to casting the Russians in their roles and instructing them to imagine what the people of those nations might support. While she appreciated the, uh, appreciated the enthusiasm, perhaps it may have been better to leave the, this particular project on the drawing board. A farce of internationalism in the Federation's finest. At the end of the day, in its rank and file who make up the beating heart of the Red Army, the soldiers of the Soviet Union were at one time legendary for both their devotion to the socialist cause and their unflinchingly tenacity in battle. Our own troops are certainly not lacking in either of these aspects, and it would help to further encourage such professional ideals for the new recruits as well. The ideal vision of a true visionary, revolutionary soldier must be realized once again. We need able-bodied men and women who are willing to undertake any sacrifice necessary for the motherland, soldiers who would make the Red Army worthy of proclaiming themselves as the strongest. Absolutely. And Golden Civil War. Oh, how great. Um, it's a little bit ahead of time. We can work on tank stuff, but I want to get stuff that's in the field immediately. Sort of ish. Yeah, there you go. Oh, more soft attack. Yes, please. Still have surplus. We love it. And the dam has been finished. Nice. 4.7% growth. Not bad. You guys still training? Good, good, good. And are you guys still looking a little weak? Here, send two more away. I want them to attack more across the line. Good. A cutting edge rifle. The AK-47 is truly a remarkable battle rifle. I love the AK-47. Capable of firing fire rifle-sized cartridges at 600 rounds per minute. The Kalashnikov also gained a legendary reputation for reliability. The rifle can survive a tremendous amount of punishment and is able to survive in even the harshest of conditions without encountering any sort of problem. On top of all of this, it's easy to maintain and relatively simple to manufacture. It is said that you cannot improve perfection, but whoever coined that phrase has obviously never met a Russian weapons designer. We should begin trials with a variety of new and revolutionary designs submitted by our finest visionaries and weapon designers. The key to defeating Germany may very well be a cutting-edge rifle. Nice. Um, human cybernetics, I love it. Collective Consciousness Initiative. Means of connecting human brains to each other through the application of electrodes, and modified brainwave readers shall be tested on procured gulag prisoners. Observations shall be made of behavior changes during and following the experiment. Information gained from this program shall be used towards the ends of isolating and defining human consciousness, as well as experimenting on means of merging discrete intelligences to form temporary collectives. Great. A human cybernetics initiative partial success. A deep gruff voice echoes from across the darkness. Sir, the reports from the human cybernetics initiative is filtered in. And may I read out the summary for you? In the course of this experiment, we have attempted to transfer brain activity to the moment of mechanical devices, namely the movement of a cursor on the monitor of a computing machine. At first, we attempted to replace sections of the brain with mechanical interfaces, although through this method, none of the subjects were able to survive longer than two to six minutes. 
this methodology methodology was abandoned, and instead we opted to train the civics before him and attempt new methods of brain to computer activity transference. Civics and Ford underwent mental conditioning before undergoing all operations and were given anesthesia following their awakening from the operations. The practicality of this initiative was reevaluated before continuing on with experimentation. Being his technology capable, capable of directly translating brain activity to the movement of mechanical drives has not yet been invented. We have discovered a suitable alternative. Through cybernetic implants, into the back of the neck or around the nose, so subjects were able to move the cursor on the monitor. The technology of these implants were more so based on the motion activity of the subject rather than brain activity. That said, the brain scans of the initial and final test subjects will be delivered to your office post haste. Smaller, motion-based cybernetic implants will show promise, and the technology could be expanded upon in the future initiatives. So, sir, a success, even if a success isn't what you asked for, per se. But who are we to deny the innovations of science when presented at our feet? The voice chuckles to itself. I suppose we get more encryption and electronics benefits. Yeah, that sounds really disgusting, I'll be honest. Like, all that stuff happening in the back of your head and just, like, everything's being connected into your head like that. Oh, I can't. I can't imagine doing that. Oh, God. Oh. But, hey, we're still doing okay here. And what are the losses like? Over half a million. We have suffered 12,000 losses. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. And, uh, the Federation's finest. And we'll probably do securing the waters, maybe? The Transpolar Diplomacy. Ooh. The Nuke Expedition. The Scandinavian Empire. Or sphere, not empire. They're not a sphere. Uh, they're not an empire, I mean. And then we will read, uh, secure the waters. We were restricted to the landlocked status during the Komi Republic days, which meant that there was little practical need for the naval force. Situations changed dramatically, however, with access to the sea secured via the critical port of Arkhangos. The town has come to organize the beginnings of a new red fleet. While the port is frozen over during the winter, it is nonetheless the most important port west of our Urals that still remain in Russian hands of our navy. We'll be tasked with the protection of this port rather than large-scale naval actions against enemy fleets, as we do not have the capability, nor need to build a large armada of ships. Guns of the future, Zidane had been presented with two options in front of him when he had been given a folder. Inside were two profiles. He knew why these had been dropped off to him. In the coming days, he had decided to manufacture that would produce all the weapons that the Soviet Federation would use to take back Moscow. However, he still needed to pick. One of the options was a group that had been relatively unknown, known as Goron Arms. The company itself had been around for a short ten years and produced some weapons of good quality. They had been known for being on time, but with weapons that had been seen as basic to the times. And the other was G.A. Korobov, a famous visionary who had made his name known with the weapon designs. While he had yet to put out a design, he had found favor with the many visionaries that found themselves home in the Federation. As Adon had read over the two profiles, it soon became apparent that he would needed to choose. While he quite liked the companies both, he liked the visionary nature of Korobov. How we like the Goron that have produced weapons before that have been received well. Gorobov it is. Project Tarakan, success. We also fired a few more rounds into the target, huh? This rifle looks weird, but it's getting the job done well enough. I'm glad you were pleased with the Tarakan rifle, comrade Tur Turgenev. Since you have certainly passed the accuracy test, I believe it's about time to transition to a simulation test, don't you agree? Said the engineer standing behind the soldier. He looked especially smug about the receiving praise from Turgenev, who had harshly criticized many of his previous designs. Yeah, sure, hopefully he doesn't snap when I get this off the helicopter. Or get off the helicopter, the thing slides a feather. Project Tarakan. There's a uh, test, 37 results. Comrade Afanasiev's a design to pass all the necessary tests. It had performed as expected in the airborne drop scenarios and had been proven to be functional as an infantry weapon. Kermit Afanasiev had managed to reduce the inaccuracy caused by the rifle's unique characteristics down to a margin of 5%. Soldiers testing the weapon report its unusually light weight as a major boon, and some officers have already requested the Tarakan prototype rifle, officially named pending for use in airborne operations conclusion. Project Tarakan has proven to be a complete success, and Comrade Afanasiev's uh, uh, design meets all requirements necessary for production authorization. The Tarakan prototype rifle is to enter mass production for use in special forces, mechanized and airborne infantry units. Comrade Afanasiev has submitted several new weapons designs for green light uh, approval, evidently eager to repeat its successes. A new weapon for new air socialism. Look at that. More air assault speed, division attack, and infantry attack. Oh, wait, do you get 10% for the infantry? But more so the pocket suction? That's fine. Operation Aeroflot. Advances into a chronoplan, or ground effective vehicle technology, shall be developed as a rapidly mobile, radar immune, and fuel efficient naval bomber and transport aircraft. Testing is to take place over both frozen terrain and open waters near Arkhangels with a variety of mounted payloads and potential airframe de developments. Probably developments. Usage of experimental lightweight materials on the project shall be authorized to allow for greater payloads on the projected aircraft. Nice. And as you can tell, the Omsk people, the Yazov is still trying to kill himself, but, you know, whatever. Found us. And what are the couch is like? We are slowly approaching two-thirds of a million. And we got all the time in the world, so it doesn't really matter. But we're still scared the water and contest the Aether. We still remember the dark months spent in the shadow of the fascist terror bombing campaigns. Our only source of elevation was the brave exploits of the free aviators. 
but even they could not be everywhere at once. With the situation in West Russia stabilized for the time being, we must learn to send our own two feet in case Lupala returns to our skies. The use of aircraft is nothing new to us, but without a proper military wing of their own, the potential of our air wings is needlessly limited. Therefore, an independent air arm of the military, the Red Air Force, shall be created. To aid with the establishment of this new force, we shall expand key air bases under our control to house more aircraft being, and begin development of modern aircraft to help dominate the sky. The return of the Serenzi plot, or Serenzi flot. Prepare for war, of course. And we can hopefully do all this stuff, but we need to be at peace for this, so we can't do this stuff, which sucks. Ships slide in the water across the cast of the White Sea, though small, they represent a fundamental change in the military situation in the north. No longer will the coasts of Russia be dominated by U-boats and Finnish patrols. No longer will they have the free reign of everything beyond where the water laps ashore. For we will rebuild the northern fleet. Once again, there are banner flies uh, or on the vessels that patrol the waves of the north. Any fascist who wishes to come through the passage will find his way blocked. The fascist pirates cannot escape the marine guards. Transport diplomacy. To the untrained eye, the frozen waves of the Arctic seem like nothing more than an insurmountable obstacle to any kind of fleet. The ice providing inconvenience for the port of Arkhangelsk in the winter months. Well, this is not entirely false. The truth is that these frigid waters are among the only remaining gateways into West Russia, so controlled by Russians as such. It would be prudent to foster good relations with the various nations of the Earth. We shall extend an olive branch across the polar territories. Scandinavian countries such as Finland and Sweden are to receive requests for diplomatic recognition. While well, the very first overtures towards the nations of the OFN shall be sent to Iceland and Canada. No country is outside of our reach, even if they lie beyond the treacherous waters of the Arctic. Also, if I... Uh, seems like there's been a little bit of a break between at the beginning of this episode and the last episode. I do apologize, I forgot that I uh, might have deleted it. A very short segment of, of this video, so my apologies if we're not exactly the same um, where we left it off, so my bad. Five year plan, I love it. Also, we have a surplus. I did do uh, temporary tax hike. It hurt our growth just a little bit, but I wanted more of a surplus. Help cut this down a little bit more because we're spending a lot of money still. Yay, better tip fighters, yay. So, I apologize for that. We have plenty of energy though. Grid power, love it, love it. Optimize language initiative success. The first results have come back from the usage of the new Russian that myself and Dr. Kuklachov or Kuklachov has developed with the guidance of your ministry. I will summarize the full report, which you will find enclosed with this message. The language itself is enhanced and modified to include 15% more information per syllable, and our best efforts have been made to eliminate redundant words and grammar. It's also mutually intelligible with the organically formed Russian language. Further refinement is, of course, in progress. Our evaluation of 51 subjects aged 18 to 60 months at the start of the experiment over a period of several months indicates a major increase in altruistic behavior. Absent any other stimuli or education beyond what a subject in the control group received, prompt a prompted descriptions by test subjects of the concept of capitalism, socialism, community, and other such terms also demonstrates a statistically insignificant significant level of approval of concepts. We have sought to linguistically code as desirable and a similar negative correction or correlation with concepts such coded as undesirable. Working with a psychologist and education specialists, we have created a series of instructive documents outlining the purpose and basic principles of our new Russian, as well as major differences between the language. Materials to instruct both school children and adults are also in production, anticipated to be ready for a limited trial distribution in approximately six months. Orthodoxy is unconsciousness. Nice. If you want to read this again, please go ahead, but... Yes. It's all eventually sent to Iceland and Canada. Yes. Collective Environment Initiative. A specialized series of habitats with no opaque, solid walls or meanings of gaining privacy shall be constructed, and a volunteer population inserted into them for a period of four months. Rigorous observations of the introduced subjects shall ensue, or ensue with the primary goal of this experiment being to compare the subject's concepts of privacy and transparency for the, from the first to last days of the experiment, as well as measuring levels of social anxiety. Hmm. And there goes Angola. Good job, Angola. Are you guys all done training? Really? Oh. Alright. Good. Solid. Absolute. The Nuke Expedition. In the most ordinary circumstances, the organization of free nations would be our greatest adversary. The United States has long established itself the vanguard of predatory capitalism. Staunchly opposed to the socialist cause in every way imaginable, these are, however, not ordinary circumstances. The black tides of Hitlerism have washed over Europe, leaving only a path of death and destruction. Even the Soviet Union was not spared from the aggression of the fascists, and now our very heartland lies at their mercy. We'll need allies that are going to overcome the threat. And the OFN are the only international alliance who share this goal. A message shall be sent to the OFN, in good faith, requesting their diplomatic recognition. With luck, this agreement shall be the first step towards further cooperation, even if we are hesitant to work too closely with these darn capitalists. And another tank. Great. Train anyway, because he can. Losses? 800,000? Beautiful, my friends. We're going to bleed them dry, quite literally. They only had roughly a million to start with, so. <clears throat> Beautiful. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? Before we start talking about stocking, 
talking about the Scandinavian sphere. That's good. Actually, I, I, I forgot about doing this earlier, but helicopters. I want to attack helicopters mm -hmm. and transports. But. Europe lies under a steel wall of fascism, but there are many ways to pierce this barrier if one knows where to look. In particular, our neighbors in Finland provide a convenient avenue for this purpose. Relations have not been exactly warm due to the past tensions, but perhaps it's still possible to reach common ground. We will send a message to the Finns with a few polite requests. Firstly, we will ask for diplomatic recognition to further cement ourselves as a legitimate Russian government. Secondly, access to the ports will be requested. Although we control ports of our own, the fact remains that they are frozen over in the winter months and have no access to the Baltic whatsoever. Well, and access to Finland's territories would solve this issue quite handily. Beautiful. Perfect up here, as we are still... Uh, not really loose. Really make us weak here. Anything else? No. He's a ranger, which is nice. You, Victor? No, no, nothing there. Okay. Not very nice. Mm hmm. Beautiful, my friends. A little more dead, but whatever. Congratulate for Norway. It would appear that the iron grip that Nazi Germany has over Europe is not nearly as tight as it seems. Norway was once ruled by the oppressive Nazi colonial government. Their freedom was cruelly denied by the Germans in the quest for total domination over their neighbors. Miraculously, the situation has made a dramatic reversal. The Norwegians have finally thrown off their shackles to remove the Nazi regime from power, establishing an independent government in its place. They're now surrounded on nearly all sides by fascist influence and will need all the help they can get, which will send a delegation to free Norway, offering military assistance in exchange for recognizing our government as a legitimate successor to the Soviet Union. Even though I think they had, that's what's going to auto-bypass because I think they already died some. Lines of Sweden. Sweden is one of the few European nations that has yet to fall under the sinister influence of Nazism, retaining its status as fully independent democracy. Their neutrality during the Second World War may have been seen as, as some as cowardice, but in the end, they meant the complete preservation of their sovereignty. Diplomacy with the Swedes. It's paramount to our goals of establishing international relations, especially when one considers their proximity. A fully-fledged diplomatic delegation is to be sent to Stockholm, with a goal of requesting their diplomatic recognition. Should they accept, we will be one step closer to establishing our government as a legitimate entity. Good, good, good. Yeah, we can't congratulate people. No, God dang it. But, connections in England. Uh, since we can't do this one, please, if you want to read this, please go right ahead. From Russia with love. Yeah. They have to be socialists or communists, so. Oh, well. The seeds of superculture. With the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Communist International uh, that had established had fallen into irrelevance and eventually became defunct altogether. With We must rekindle the flame and create a new entity for encouraging global cooperation. A new socialist international has been proposed. Like the internationals that came before it, the common term will enable more effective economic and political cooperation between all socialist parties of the world. Even in these dark times, the Sokken term shall ensure that the revolution will prevail no matter what trials lie ahead. Solidarity forever. I would love to be able to peacefully reunify with... Uh, this guy. But I don't think he's gonna live because Rook is very strong. Like, I hate how strong Rook is. You got both. Oh, man. You have, this Rook has literally double the manpower of uh, the other guy there, so. Kind of sucks. Yeah, we're doing really well but with. They've lost a million soldiers. That's Rodonculus. They still have soldiers left. After this, we're gonna split them up and we're gonna really start butchering them soon. Um. Launch Sweden, not bad. Let's get, see some culture. Let's get through the focus tree first, and we'll do that. Oh, success of Sweden. Success! The Swedish government has accepted our overtures of cooperation and officially recognized our government as a legitimate successor to the Union and the rightful government of Russia. Already, our diplomatic teams are preparing to establish an embassy in Sweden, and our government has begun to reap the benefits of diplomatic recognition. The imperialism of the capitalists and fascist powers of the world truly know no bounds. Greatest of all the imperial powers of the world is the German Reich, whose conquest has spanned from Africa to Moscow and the, to the formerly spotless seas, seas of Luna. The reckless, genocidal madness has encroached to the territories of the USSR and opposed brutal or aggressive tyranny upon a formerly liberated society. This shall not st stand. We shall compose a message directly to Germany, condemning their aggressive nature and their horrific imperialism. While we do not expect a reply to inform them of their inevitable fate, it is the greatest mercy that we are willing to afford the reactionary invader. Nice. Would you like to attack one more time? Okay, there you go. Alright, so let's start doing this. There you go. Let's get ready to rumble. And really rumble. Now, we're not going to win a lot down here just because they're so mounted and they haven't really been attacking. But the north will collapse pretty darn quickly, hopefully. That is Legol. What is this? Crew transport helis. Seeds of superculture. Nice. Yeah, when you start making helicopters, formation of the common and a step towards the free world. Or, yep, pretty much. Um, so this is early transport helicopter, 
And where are the attack helicopters? Because this is a scout helicopter, which is okay. Not really useful for us. Though. Are we ready? Oh, we're still getting up there. That's fine. Yeah. Oh, going about these. Please go right ahead. Oh, the West African Union declines. That sucks. Cool. Oh, Russian Soviet Republic. Cool. Gone to the declines. I wish we could do more about this stuff. Wolofia. Partial success of Aeroflot. Abstract over the past three months, we had a design and tested four prototypes of the Aerocono Ekrano plan to no avail. Various measurements of different airframes and payloads yielded no results. Modern weaponry was deemed too heavy for liftoff. Fortunately, two weeks ago, senior engineer, whom I would like to recommend for promotion, offered a blueprint patched together from existing naval bomber and helicopter designs. Emphasis was placed on fuel efficiency and radar immunity. We adopted his designs and constructed a prototype. The project was tested off the coast of Arkhangelsk. Four pilots maneuvered the vehicle at a speed ranging from X to X miles per hour, but almost crashed upon breaking speed X. A few fixes later, most weaponry was removed. Most mounted payloads, including heavy machine guns and experimental point defense installations, were deemed too heavy. The remaining component was a torpedo bay loaded with four units. Another test commenced, where the pilots were told to sink a fishing boat on the same coast. The experiment was a success, but three torpedoes missed the mark. The pilots reported that the aircraft is difficult to handle, too fast to properly maneuver, and lacking in proper weaponry. Conclusion, it's impossible to add on more weapons to combo units with the current technology. The craft we have now, while workable, is not yet efficient in combat. More testing to follow. At least it looks nice. Project Zeste. Testing to the weaponization and deployment of high-yield lasers as anti-aircraft and electronic warfare means we shall be implemented. Shall be implemented on a land-based mobile and stationary platform. The projected platform shall make use of artificial rubies as a laser focusing mechanism and be capable of targeting rapidly, rapidly targeting and rapidly destroying electronics of enemy vehicles. Nice. Success, partial success. I love success. And are we ready to go? Oh, it's time to die. We have a little bit of a deficit. Oh, that sucks. Go in. I'm tired of waiting. Oh, the Communist International's assembly is not ready. Ever since the creation of the Communist International, work has been going on to prepare a great assembly. Their representatives of the world's socialist parties will be able to gather and discuss important issues and propose various motions. Today, the work is complete and the assembly is ready. Members of the Comintern will be able to propose motions, vote on them through the secret ballot. The addition of the assembly to the organization's charter will no doubt prove to be an important tool in the struggle to advance socialism internationally. A glorious day for the workers, indeed. Yeah, we're not going to win over here, especially in the South. Never mind, we already won in portions here. That's nice. Help him out here, too. Attack Kelly's good. Good, good, good. Uh, definitely recon, too. You should be able to win here now. Now, our losses are going to be staggering quite a bit, but they've already lost over millions, so... I can't imagine these guys would be able to have any more equipment to stand up to us. But we captured this a test on the plans. If you're going to about that, please go right ahead. Blue's well, bread, we think, the And now we're on... What? Modern agriculture. Great! They have a thousand manpower left. Any damage you do, they will not be able to replace. So, it's going to be costly. And now they're out of manpower. As they should be. If you want to worry about that, too, please go right ahead. Very nice. Communist International, is there anything we can do down here at all? Oh, God. We're voting? Show and hide. There's all this stuff about. Membership for Guinea. Uh, if you want to worry about that, please go right ahead. Yes. We'll vote yes. We have four votes. Or we get a vote twice. Reactionary imperialism is, shall not be here. Yeah, no, you're gonna to kill them all off as much as fast as possible. Good, good, good. I don't care how much, how many losses we take. We got more than enough to deal with these guys. Um, with that in mind, we're gonna go five up to thirty, and then we'll max that out. There you go. There's salt. Good. Where the helicopters? It's good. Experimental helicopters. We don't need that one. I don't know why we're why are we losing so badly here. Or the attack, sons. Suffered 100,000 losses. Come on. Keep going. Uh, they're not that strong. Another joins the fold. Throughout history, the cr top crust of society oppressed the huddled, yearning masses of workers calling a tribal chief. A noble, an emperor, or a CEO, they're the main iterations of one hateful concept. 
tyranny. Not against one particular group, although that has certainly happened. Against the downtrodden society, every single collection of human beings, the proletariat, where we once raised our eyes to the banking metro Mesopotamian horizon, a hopeful for a future yet to come. We now stand tall almighty among our peers. As today's proven, we're only getting stronger. To vote, the vote to admit a fellow socialist power of the common turn is past. Today is a glorious day of the free workers of the world. Our movement is not an iron fist, gleefully beating against our oppressors until we attain freedom. It is a tide. A tide is slow, almost unmoving, yet bit by bit we rise. It slowly washes away all that stands against its goal until it is stood. Proud and triumphant. We are the tide, drowning the capitalists against all the money and weapons they will throw against us. They will only slow down the inevitable. Let them save the last few seconds of dominance. It will be their last. We cannot vote again until a month passes. Then our advance story starts anew. Now let us be merry. How do- no. No. With air superiority, we should easily be able to beat the crap out of them. I refuse to believe that. Look at all those guys. These guys metals got They've got so many metals. I love it. Yes. Even more, more, more. they got nothing else to do. Do it all. I don't really care. Nice. I'll probably go to vote too anyways, so. Uh, I'm going to expect 200,000 losses, maybe. Ah, partial success of Collective Environment Initiative. Abstract, 50 subjects, uh, the designation none, were transferred to the new facility of blank at Gulag. X. The facility consists of a large compound made out of glass walls, strong and transparent, totally 30 rooms. A central meeting area, six bathrooms, a gymnasium, and a uh, library. The set itself is minimalistic. There is no furniture higher than four feet. The library has no bookshelves. The gymnasium only includes a running track and a lifting stations. The subjects were instructed to inhabit the compound for a four-hour month period during which they were observed by our staff via hidden cameras and wire tape tappings. There's no interference on our part throughout the entire experiment. The subjects had equated themselves well to the new environment. The result, without privacy, the subjects resorted to in chronological order. Excessive conversations with one another concerning trivial details, daily workouts, and readings of Marxist literature. During two months, or more, during month two, our staff noticed a trend among the subjects. Thirty-two of them had formed strong relationships with one, with one another, confiding personal details and secrets. The less sociable ones continued with the routine described above. By the end of the final month, all but two of the subjects were highly sociable, partying in the main hall and engaging in various activities. Conclusion: We were able to gather critical data with this experiment. It appears that the human mind is indeed wired to the, to the collective, and reinforcing the findings of a great social scientist. The mere fact that the subjects were willing to put aside pri privacy in favor of interaction and ultimately develop trust is a great success. Unfortunately, our data is not yet complete. Further studies will need to be done to support the findings here, and there is a matter of the two months or the two individuals that had refrained from social interaction. They did not ex exhibit any abnormal behavior upon release, so I wish to detain them for further questioning. Post test: The remaining subjects have been transferred back to the Gulag system and are placed within the same camp. Hopefully, the next batch will be more conclusive. At least nobody went insane. Revolutionary literature program. Classical literature has been rewritten with new language, and new ideological concepts shall be deployed into a limited population of volunteer children at a sufficiently formative age. The population shall be observed, and any behavioral changes related to the introduced concept shall be noted and arranged or analyzed for future views. The experiment shall be carried out in parallel with children of different ages and results compared by age group. Great. Kill off every last demon here if you possibly can. Um, do we have any space for any more? I got some. Oh, that's not bad. You go right there, and then you will have to go right there. Nice. I, mean, I doubt we have any cast, do we? Eh, no, not really. It's fine. Well, I guess we could be using the tank divisions as well right now. Might as well, right? We want to get more logistic companies, too. Uh, do we have another field marshal? I'll tune in. Oh, you sound very familiar, huh? But level 6, Gretschko. Holy crap. Yes, please. If you want to worry about capturing Lennon's body, please go ahead. New decisions are available. Nice. Leave him be. Oh. Okay. Preserve the revolutionary, yes. Melanin's mausoleum. Bury the revolutionary, that'd be nice. But I want more political power. Yeah, you get plus 5% stability, but you get stability. You get basically everything here, but you also get the natural spirit to get that. And you get more political power. Let's preserve the revolutionary. Is it worth it? Eh. It's alright. Where are we at for this? 0. 0.54? 6.7%. Nice. We could enact war taxes, but we're okay. The tanks on the front lines, yes they are. And they're gonna force the attack. I want you to literally run their bodies over with tanks. And motorize an APC. Oh, there we go. And who do we want to offer membership to Vietnam? Yeah. You worry about us capturing gulags? Please go right ahead. Never get out like this, well we'll see about that. We've lost oh, quite a few less than I thought we would. Nice, not bad. Good, good, good. Kill them off. And we won, my friends. Oh, we captured the gloves again. We got them quite a few times. 
Um, so that's 66 days. That's 299 days for the other project. Holy crap, that's a long time. That's 154 days. Not bad. Oh, and now we can do all this stuff. Uh, let's get the one with more manpower. Infrastructure is nice too. Oh crap. Oh, maybe not. And we're gonna integrate all these areas as well, which would be great, 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 great. We got time for that. It's gonna hurt our economy just a little bit, but whatever. You guys come all the way over here at 69. We'll go to war. Was it 71 or 72? We can go back to war with each other. I forget. We only have 41 military factories though. Oh, and here comes the UK. Are you know what costs? Cool. There we go. That was lagging super hard there. Manpower would be really good. More political power would be great. We really don't need it too much. Recon company, land ports are okay. Let's get the manpower. Manpower is so good to get. So if that's the case, we're still making these guys. These are small tankies. Um, I, if we have enough time, I do want to get some other types of tanks, but we'll see. There's no guarantee. Um, what else do we have around here? Because I do want to wait for... Yeah, everyone wants Vietnam in here. Power grid. I want to do a few more of these before we actually really get to the next focus tree. So, that doesn't really matter too much. Where are we at for now? Minus 0.36, 55% poverty rate. Not bad. And surplus. Is, oh, wow, that's really bad. Holy crap, that's really, really, really bad. That's not actually that bad, but still. Yeah, there we go. I want more stuff like this, so I think we'll just probably wait and see. Um, we're still going up very nicely. Political interference. Oh, we're going over this. Please go ahead, too. There you go. And then, industrial equipment. Factory problems. We have innovative industries, so we're already maxed out on that, which is awesome. Function administration is not bad. I wish we go up faster than that, though. Modern agriculture, there's nothing you can really do about that. And Vietnam is accepted. Great. Good job, comrades. And modern research facilities, not bad. But, and we have academic base. But I think we'll probably end it here, just because there's not really much else here for us until uh, I start recording again, and we can talk about some of the successes here. So, um, other than that, reunification of Russia, I think it might be best to wait. Uh, we'll see. Uh, there's no there's no really real point to rush it, though. We know the Federation of Soviet Socialist Republics. Hmm... I mean, we have to wait till 72 anyways, so... I think we'll just end it here. And we'll do this one. I'll probably do this off-screen as well. Oh, our maximal credit rating will be raised. That's not bad. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we reunite the rest of Russia. Thanks for watching. Have a great... Ooh. Republic of Kazakhstan. Rest of your day.